They are the insiders, Chris Johnson, Pierre Lebron, and Darren Dreger. Gentlemen, tis the season for holiday parties and charity events. But Chris, given what's going on with COVID, is the NHL being forced to play the role of the Grinch? They are. There's simply no other choice. We can't uh, live life just yet the way we all want to. And so the NHL has changed its protocols, tightened them up a little bit. Remember in November, you had both the New York Islanders and the Ottawa Senators have to be shut down for a period. No one wants to see that happen again, and cases are rising around the continent. And so that means no holiday parties, no charity events, no public autograph uh, events for NHL players, and even the, the instruction that, you know, when it comes to their family time over the holidays, not to have too large a gatherings because of possible exposure. As for the Olympics, I think we're going to see it go right till January 10th before the NHL and NHL pay and make a decision because this is very much a day-by-day -day type of situation. All right, the Jake DeBrus saga continues in Boston. He was a healthy scratch over the weekend. He's officially asked for a trade. What kind of interest is there generated right now, Darren? Yeah, a significant amount, Gino. Uh, as many as 12 teams, maybe more than 12 teams, have already checked in on Jake DeBrus situation with the Boston Bruins. But the reality is the Bruins now need Jake DeBrusque in their lineup. They've got Brad Marchand uh, suspended. Their American Hockey League team in Providence is dealing with a COVID issue, so they need him on the ice right now. Uh, I would say the New York Rangers are among the teams that have expressed some interest. You've got the Vancouver Canucks, maybe Montreal, maybe Calgary, certainly Arizona go down the list. Historically speaking, when there have been other Jake DeBrusque trade situations and speculations, uh, the St. Louis Blues have been near that to the top of that list as well. You talk about a kid who could score 20 to 25 and he scored 16 times in the playoffs, so those stats matter. When Jeff Gordon was handed the keys in Montreal, he was immediately tasked with the task of finding a French-speaking general manager to work with him. What can you tell us about that search, Pierre? Well, whether it's Montreal, Anaheim, or Chicago, all those teams are going to run into some of the same obstacles at some point here when they begin their interview process, which is that some candidates are available now and some are not available until after the season. In the case of Matthew Darsh, who I believe is Anaheim, Anaheim's long list of names. It doesn't necessarily mean they'll reach out for an interview, but he is on their long list of names, and we know that he will be of interest to the Montreal Canadiens. Well, he is available. You know, he does not have a clause in his deal that says he has to wait till the rest of the season. Julian Breezewell, the GM in Tampa, does not believe on holding his people back. So if and when Montreal and or Anaheim reach out, Matthew Darsh will be available to go for an interview if he chooses to do so. Well, look, anytime there's a Shea Weber spotting in Montreal that's going to generate a bit of a buzz and most definitely has this week he's there on an NHL mandated medical evaluation as all part of the LTAR situation that Shea Weber and the Montreal Canadiens are in it's believed that ownership would love to have Shea Weber around this team as often as he can manage I mean that's what leadership means off the ice now whether this is a short-term thing or a long-term thing ultimately will be determined by Shea Weber's family but it's something to keep an eye on moving forward well, if you're going to talk about Shea Weber, then let's talk about Carey Price. So one goes with the other, right? The two great leaders of the Montreal Canadiens. It's going to be one of the great moments, I think, this season, guys, when Carey Price is healthy and back and to see the Bell Centre react to his return. But bigger picture, longer term, what about his future with the Montreal Canadiens? There's a new person running the Montreal Canadiens, we know, and Jeff Gordon. Uh, Carey Price was very tight with Mark Bergman. Everyone knows that. Um, he's 34 years old. Where does a 34-year-old future Hall of Famer fit in the plan of a rebuild if that's what Jeff Gordon plans to do? Uh, there are teams around the league, some contenders, I can tell you already, that are intrigued to find out where that all goes. He has a full no move. Uh, we know that he waived for the Seattle expansion draft. That was a very specific circumstance so that Jake Allen wouldn't get taken. But I will say this, uh, it's all about him getting healthy and back on the ice. But longer term, closer to the trade deadline or perhaps the offseason, I think an interesting conversation perhaps to be had there between Gordon and Carey Price's camp. Elsewhere, Evander Kane's 21-game suspension for submitting a fake vaccination card ended Sunday night. He was immediately waived by the Sharks and cleared. So what's next, Chris? Well, that still remains to be seen. I mean, certainly the preference at this point is to try to move Evander Kane to another NHL team. It's something the Sharks have been exploring, his agent Dan Milstein helping with that process. But... You know, as Evander Kane starts back up with the San Jose Barracuda in the AHL on Tuesday, he's aware he might have to go back to the Sharks, that perhaps that transaction might not 
uh, materialize, and it's something he's open to doing. Not not sure how he'll be, uh, you know, welcomed back in that dressing room. There was certainly some some tension there last season, but you know, if this trade doesn't happen, you know, we might have to see him come back into Teal uh, before he plays uh, in another city. That won't be easy. They are the insiders: Chris Johnson, Pierre LeBrun, and Darren Dreger.